And I'm okay. Let it settle. And I had my heart broken, and then I met someone else. You know, when your heart's broken, you you think you'll never love again, and you don't know why you failed so miserably and why you put yourself through it. And then I met somebody who made me feel love again. One of the places I work is near Cape Town, and I would go to restaurants there. Often they would be playing K-pop music videos on big screens. And I started to notice that a lot of the time the girls are dancing in hot pants. And it made me think of this song. And it's a song that when I play it, people seem to respond to. So it's always been in the back of my head, like, if I make a video, I should probably do it for hot pants. And so one day, watching a K-pop video, I thought, well, I should make a K-pop video for hot pants. It was not easy to find the dancers. And I've, I wanted to make this video for three years before Psy, before I had ever heard of Psy. I felt like, well, I'm in New York. I should be able to find k Korean dancers. I, I have approached a couple of people in, in the past few years, but nothing happened. And then uh, one day I saw a neighbor walking a little dog. <laughs> she found it on the Korean Craigslist, which is Hey Korean. And like a light went off in my head. So I asked a, a Korean friend if she would post the advertisement. And I got like five or six responses. And a couple of them seemed outstanding. And one of them was Eileen's, who wrote... I have a lot of experience for the uh, teaching and dancing on the stage and chore choreographer in my country, in Korea. So that was very interesting to me. So I contacted her to find out if she had relationships with Asian dancers because the number of responses wasn't so great. And she said, of course, I, I teach in Queens and in Manhattan and I could find Asian dancers. So it seemed uh, like the way to go. It was not what I expected. I know they were looking for like K-pop style, so I thought it would be like more of a K-pop style song, but it wasn't at all. Like a cute little country-ish, folkish, like love song. It had a really country theme. I had no idea that it was about hot pants. I, <laughs> I had no idea it was about hot pants. <laughs> I didn't really pay attention to the lyrics at first, but then I started to realize that uh, it was about hot pants when we, you know, started wearing the shorts. <laughs> That's when I realized it's about hot pants. <laughs> it's country song with the K-pop dance. First time I was uh, thinking very, you know, not matching, but he sent me the, some video with the K-pop stars. Hi. So I was very interesting, so I wanted to do it. <laughs> it was great, but it was also challenging to me because I normally don't work with dance. Eileen began choreographing and, and doing moves. When I was in the room and watching the dance, I was like, it, it seems great, like, cool. And then I would watch it on, on video and I'd be like, hmm, it's not, there's something about it that isn't what I intended for it. 
I think it was very specific gesturally, like a little too small and a little um, almost too sexy. There was like a lot of hands in the crotch kind of thing. And I, I, I've been nervous from the beginning that I'm going to receive some hate or some negativity about getting six beautiful Asian girls to dance with me in golden hot pants. But that's the concept for the video. So she was very open to like, what, like, let me know what you want or if this is what you're looking for or how can I do it differently. And then I faced a wall because how do you tell someone how to move without possibly choreographing it yourself and that's not what I do. So one day I downloaded a bunch of K-pop videos and started, because I'm an editor, started to choose different moves and, and kind of put together a little dance. Later he uh, sent me some video again and then I fixed and then we tried to figure out to good movement. And she did a good job of embracing it and trying to change it enough so, so it becomes ours. It's very Korean style. <laughs> yeah, a lot of um, K-pop, they do a lot of movement. If, uh, if anyone's responsible for stealing moves, it's me and me encouraging her to take these moves or certain moves because I just felt like it worked. He has a lot of idea. I feel like uh, I choreograph with Ken. <laughs> Yes, I did. <laughs> no, I haven't. As I said, I danced when I was younger, and I do have a claim to fame. When I was 16 years old, I learned how to ballroom dance in a community theater in the Bronx, and my dance partner was Jennifer Lopez, also known as J-Lo, or Jenny from the Block. Cut two pictures of us together. Yeah. Learning the dance was difficult. I haven't learned to dance in more years than I want to mention. Um, and when Eileen was first teaching it to me, it was like, okay, so you do this and this and this. Okay, got it. And then you do this. Okay, got it. And then you do this and this and this. Okay, got it. And then you do this. It was like, enough, enough. It was just like, it just seemed to go on for a long time. So I videotaped her doing it. And then I worked a lot at home with that videotape. Ken's dancing, he actually surprised me because the second part of the dance, um, I even I couldn't get it down at first, but then he came and then he was like doing it. I guess he like practiced by himself. So that surprised me because <laughs> I didn't know that he was actually gonna come out and do what we were doing. So that was really cool. Okay, cameras. Speeding. Speeding. Roll sound. It was demanding, but it wasn't backbreaking. Okay, let's do it again. He was the main character of the music video, and then he had to direct everything as well. So he was running back and forth, he's watching it, and he's doing it himself, and it must have been hard work. I'd like to see it. At the same time, he's doing a lot of job because he has to shooting, he has to singing, he has to dancing, he has to playing. Rolling? Still speeding. Okay. Ready? It, it is really hard, but he did a good job because he take care of everything, even, you know, to us. One thing that happened that I didn't expect, it was shot in this beautiful little theater called the Slipper Room on the Lower East Side that was actually, it's set up for burlesque. So its whole idea was for one or two burlesque dancers. The stage is tiny, so the idea became, what if we cleared all the tables in the audience and had the girls dancing on the floor? And which is more K-pop anyway, because every K-pop video is a wide-angle lens with a great expanse of floor. The surprise happened when 
I was working with Lane who shot the main camera and did an excellent job, Lane Savage. We were working out one of the setups with the tracking crane shot. And I was in my position and the girls were free to roam around and he, he shot a sample for me to look at. And when I looked at it, in the background were a couple of the girls taking pictures of themselves on stage. So in this example footage, I saw the girl on stage and me in the foreground, and I thought, what if we put all of the girls on stage and had me in the foreground for one take? And it was great. It, like, it really mixes it up in the first part of the song, and that I didn't expect to do. Yes, because in Korea, you know, they do uh, K-pop song and K-pop dance. I think it's the first one that I, I actually watched or whatever. Yeah, I never saw it before. Awesome. It's a new style. I think people will follow it. For me, it's more interesting. I guess it could work because it worked for song. I think it's a great idea. I do believe that this could be the first time that a non-K-pop song was produced like a K-pop video and I hope this video gets to put that flag in the ground and say we did it first. He said that's his goal to have Korean dance with his song um, for many years. Now he achieved it. I think Mm, it's a little bit hard, but we are to it. <laughs>